Welcome to the Parasite Podcast, a show about me and you. We are Venom. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Parasite Podcast, and I am here with a longtime viewer of the channel uh, since I've been doing the Venom vlog, and he's always very positive, always leaving really great comments, uh, you know, chatting with other people in the comments sometimes, and has uh, just been really just exactly like a lot of you out there, just, you know, I would try to build a place of positivity and, uh, and Christian is definitely, you know, adds to that on a, on a weekly basis. Definitely. So Christian say hello to everyone and introduce yourself and let them know where they can find you on social media. Hello, my name is Christian and you can find me on Twitter at Dino killer 45. There you go, Dino Killer 45 and I'll put a link to that down below if you guys want to follow him on Twitter. Um, and, uh, dude, it's so nice to have you here today. Thanks for making the time. Oh, no problem. So I got to ask because, again, sometimes there are people that I see their comments and stuff, and I know I've had like a, a DM or two with them, but I don't know a ton about them. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, anything you're comfortable sharing with us, and then, uh, you know, after that, tell us how you came across the Venom Vlog channel. I'm 21 years old, going to college to become a marine biologist. Um, and I found your channel through... Uh, I watched Tom Hardy Italia videos, I think is the channel name. Oh, yeah. And your your videos just came and recommended. Oh, awesome. Ah, sweet. That's nice to know. Um, I don't know if it does that anymore with the algorithms nowadays because I feel like people are like – I had someone comment the other day. They said, dude, I haven't got a single notification for you in a month, and now I see you've had like 50 videos uploaded. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Yeah, YouTube's been weird. It has been. Well, the main reason, and I don't know how many people know this, uh, is that they cut their staff like dr dramatically. So there's not a lot of people physically working for uh, YouTube right now that there, there used to be. So um, I think sometimes when the algorithm gets out of whack, there's no one there to fix it right away. And so we're running into all these current problems. Um, but it's you know to me it's not a big deal. I keep chugging along, and hopefully anyone who's not getting those notifications, eventually they'll come back to the channel just out of curiosity, hopefully, and be like, "What's Seek been up to?" And then they see like, "Oh my God, three hundred videos, Jesus!" Um, <laughs> I do post a lot. Do you think I do you think I post too much, or do I post just enough? I I honestly like how much you post, but it will probably vary from person to person. It definitely does. I have people that tell me, um, hey, can you post like twice a week uh, so I can keep up? And I'm like, hey, I get it that you, you know, there's other things you do and, you know, all that stuff. But for me, for my sanity, I have to post as often as I feel like it. <laughs> and some some weeks that's like 40 videos and then the next week it'll be two videos. So I feel like it balances out pretty well. Yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> so so you're, you're 21, you're going to school. Um, you know, what is... What is your interest? Because I, I love that you mentioned Tom Hardy Italia. We haven't talked about them on the Parasite podcast yet. I love their channel. They're one of the first channels I found after starting the Venom vlog because as I was posting things, I started getting recommended at their Venom content. And that was a great one because they would post things that fans filmed uh, in Atlanta and other cities where they were filming the first movie. So that's so great that you came across. Is there a specific series of videos of theirs that you are a fan of? I haven't watched your channel in a while, but I remember before I found your channel, I watched a couple of videos of Tom Hardy like walking, dancing down the street. <laughs> yeah. And then like a day or two later, you just saw a Venom vlog. I'm like, I'll check it out. And here we are. <laughs> Sweet. Well, I'm glad you did check it out. And uh, thanks, YouTube. You, you, you hooked someone in, which is awesome. Uh, and uh, yeah, I love that channel, that Italia channel. They they also have a, a Twitter account. I don't know if you follow them there, but my first like season of doing Venom vlog, I referenced them a ton. Like a lot of my movie news and uh, behind the scenes stuff came from their YouTube channel and their Twitter account. Even though when I started uh, Venom vlog, I wasn't on Twitter, and now I'm once again not on Twitter. <laughs> so uh, so do you? I know you have a Twitter account. How active are you on there? And is there a reason that you're on there you know a lot or a little like depending on your answer um i would say i'm on there a good amount but i mainly am on there to look for movie news okay for like different movies i'm excited for like there's a bunch of stuff that i probably wouldn't have figured out or knew about if i didn't like see a, like a movie page or whatever post it 
or movie recommendations that, of movies that I probably would have never found. Yeah, I gotta say, it's uh, besides like connecting with your good friends, uh, social media is really great for instant news, especially when it comes to entertainment. Um, is there what movies? Well, I know because we're in a pandemic right now, so it's kind of tough to answer this, but. What movies are you excited for coming out? Obviously, Venom Two. I'm going to guess, but uh, but as far as anything outside of Venom Two, is there any other movies that you're like, just release it already? Like I don't want to wait anymore. That would, funny enough, they're both Sony movies, um, <laughs> as well as Venom Two. But it was the new Ghostbusters movie, okay, and Morbius. Nice. That uh. I'm really excited about. I'm also really excited about Doom or Dune. Yeah, Dune. You know, I I uh, haven't seen the trailer yet, but one just dropped, I think, like yesterday or something. Um, yeah, that's what got me excited because I never read the book Dune. I really didn't know much about it. Oh, that book is so dense. It's. Uh, I remember I had a friend that was like, I was staying with him for a while um, a- after my aneurysm, and he was just like, you cannot leave this house unless you read Dune. <laughs> and... Uh, there were parts of that book I liked, and there was parts that really bored me, bored me out of my mind. Uh, but uh, I think it's enough. There's enough in there to make a really solid movie out of. And I know there's been one before, and I've I've seen it like once or twice. But I'm not a huge huge fan of it. But um, I'm excited to watch this trailer because I think the director that they got for it is a is a really good choice. Yeah, the director choice definitely intrigued me. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, that's cool that you're on. I gotta say, you know, since Venom, Sony's been uh, actually a little bit before Venom, technically, uh, as far as successes go financially, with uh, Jumanji. The, when they did the new Jumanji, they've kind of been on a roll since then, as far as like, uh, you know, they're the the things they aim to be blockbusters are actually making money for them, which is uh, a definite change of pace for that company. Yeah, I remember seeing the trailer for Jumanji when. I went with my stepbrother and friend to go see Spider-Man Homecoming, mm-hmm. and they played the trailer before. I'm like, oh, this is probably going to be terrible, but <laughs> I ended up going to see it, and it was really fun, and the characters were really, really good. You know, I got to say, I am I grew up, I'm a big Robin Williams fan, so I've seen every single movie he's ever been in, uh, a, a couple times each, probably, and... Um, I love the original Jumanji, even though it was a, a movie made for my little brother, but I took him to see it in a theater in the 90s. And when this new one came out, I was 50-50. And when I saw it, I was just like you. I was like, wow, this actually has a well-structured story. It's it's simple. Um, you understand everyone's motivations, including villains, and uh, even other video game programs. But everything worked, and it was funny. Like, I, I laughed pretty much, uh, like, a, a pretty good amount watching that movie. Um, and that was, you know, because I know Sony did, like you said, Homecoming. That was with Marvel, though, so it was kind of easy for them to have a success with that because it had the Marvel brand on it. But after that, when they did Jumanji, that to me, that's the movie that I think turned them. Because that movie made, like, a billion dollars, and it came out the same week, uh, like month as uh, The Last Jedi. Um, which was uh, talk about you know hardcore competition. It's whether you like the movie or not. It was Star Wars and uh, Jumanji actually I think made more or around the same amount of money as Star Wars: Last Jedi. I think it made around the same amount. I think it made a little bit less, but it was definitely pre- a lot closer than people would expect. It, it probably made less as far as like number, but I bet you it profited more. Because, probably, yeah. Because yeah, Star Wars probably cost half a billion dollars to make and market that movie. Um, so you got those movies coming up that you're interested in. Is there, um, you know, do you watch a lot of TV? I know you're a, a student, you know, so I know that can be hard to juggle, things like that. But is there any television shows you're watching or digging right now? I've been watching a lot of, like, uh, horror shows. Like, I watched Haunting a Hill House again with my mother. Isn't that awesome? I love that. Sh- yeah, it's so good. Yeah. And I'm excited about like watching uh, Hellstrom in the second season of uh, Haunting of Bly Manor, I think is what the season's called. Oh, is that good? I haven't seen that yet. Comes out the second, it, but since it's Mike Flanagan, I'm assume it's good. <laughs> I don't think I've seen a bad film Oh, him. Oh, I'm sorry. Is, is Bly Manor, is that what House on Haunted Hill season two's called? 
Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I th- I, th- I heard the name, and I was thinking it was a completely different show. So I got you. Yeah, no, I'm I'm excited for the second season too. It's I I Mike Flanagan is that guy came out of nowhere, and he's been knocking it out of the park pretty consistently. He he's adapted things that I never thought he'd be able to adapt, like Gerald's Game. Yeah, yeah, Gerald's Game. I finally watched that, and uh, like I think like a month ago. And I was like, yeah, I've heard a couple people tell me to watch this. I should check it out. And, you know, I'm not really a fan of the, the source material. But, man, oh, man, that was really well done. And Carla Gugina, like, she rocked it in that movie. Everything I've seen her in, she's been really good. So looks like she's got herself a nice career going. She's awesome. I, I've had a crush on her since I was probably your age. Um, and, uh, yeah, she's – but she's super talented. And uh, Bruce Greenwood in that one, too. There's – um. You know, we're, we're obviously, during this pandemic, we're kind of slow on movies because you mentioned Morbius, and I know we're going to talk about Venom and stuff. Uh, it has been slow on, on the movie news right now, uh, but obviously we are inching towards the end of the year, which hopefully means that kind of stuff will, will pick back up. What are you most excited for to see, like, first up? Like, f- for Morbius, do you want a new trailer? Um, do you want some, like, still images, you know, uh, interviews with the cast? And same with Venom. Like, what kind of promotional material are you hoping drops first uh, to get you more excited for the movie? For Morbius, I I kind of like to hear about, like, what it was working on the set. Yeah, Definitely. But also probably another trailer. <laughs> How about both, right? Yeah. Nice. Uh, do you are you before we get into the Venom part? Are you um, are you interested in like? Because I know you said you're studying to be a marine biologist and stuff. But are you? Do you have an interest as far as like? Do you like knowing how movies are made? Is that something that kind of piques your interest? Yeah, it actually, it kind of does. But I was always curious because I knew mo- making movies was hard. But I didn't realize how hard it was to actually make a movie until I watched like your videos and stuff on it. You know, that's actually because you're not the only person that said that. Like Bruce has um, uh, Bruce has said that, and a couple other people in the in the comments have said that, and that actually means a lot to me because I feel like there's a lot of people on YouTube that cover movies, and rarely ever do you hear them say even just "oh, movies are hard to make," um, and I feel like a lot of them. Even ones who are like scoopers, you know, and get like information first, like Collider and stuff. Sometimes they sound like they don't even know how movies are made. And I know for a fact that they get to visit sets of movies. Um, so it's just, it, it is like movies are hard and they're unforgiving. I mean, there's no better uh, example of that right now than Ray Fisher, like speaking up about, uh, you know, about tough times he had on the uh, the Justice League movie, the reshoot. So yeah, movies are tough, man. They're, they're, they're you know, they almost aim to be make everyone a machine like a cog and you just have to do your job um but you will work with good people i i've always said i've worked with way more good people than bad people in movies but once you're in work mode you have your job to do and the pressure's on and it's like i said you know when you think of 300 million dollar budget of a movie you, you can't make a mistake like you you have to at least deliver on what you promised you would deliver on and then you have to hand it over to the editors, and then they have to deliver what they promised uh, that they would deliver on. And then the producers and the, the executives will get a hold of it, and they'll chop the movie up sometimes because they have to make sure it's the best thing they can think of so that it makes their investors' money back. And it's just a process that is just – when you see a good movie, it's nothing short of a miracle. It's 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 almost as, as much of a miracle as a childbirth, uh, the way everything has to line up perfectly – for this life to take form, it's the same way for a movie. So what are what are some of your favorite movies that you think are just near perfect? You can name one, two, or three, just any movies that you think are just near perfection in your mind. Um, Jaws has to be one. That's a good one. I honestly think the first Ghostbusters is pretty much perfect. Okay, yeah. Um... And probably Jurassic Park. Dang, dude. Well, you nailed it. I, I mean, I, as far I can agree with you on those. Like, I know those are your opinion, but I I agree with your opinion. Um, 
Ghostbusters. Now that's a movie that I'm I'm sure I watched and grew up with in the '80s. I just don't remember having a connection to it. My mom says I did. She said I used to dress up like a Ghostbuster with the trap and all that stuff. But I don't remember. I don't have any memories of it. So I've kind of disconnected from Ghostbusters. But I will say, watching. Um, do you watch Red Letter Media at all on YouTube? Uh, no. I don't think I have. They're my favorite YouTube channel. It's just like these four or five guys and sometimes one of their girlfriends or, 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 you know, this or comedian, female comedian, like they'll have a bunch of guests on. Um, they have Pat Oswald and Macaulay Culkin was recurring on their show sometimes. And they, uh, they're just a bunch of guys who just make little films. So they review movies, but they tell a little story at the beginning and end of each review. Um, and I really like their format, but they, the way they talk about Ghostbusters and how they broke down the original movie, it made me really appreciate it 10 times more. Like I would have never thought of that as a near perfect movie, but when you think of how they balance the, the seriousness of the supernatural stuff, how they, they come up with rules on how to fight ghosts, they come, the, the humor is very, um, uh, natural and, and, uh, the story of just like four schlub guys who aren't really superhero esh at all coming together to save the city. It's, it's, I gotta say, it's I I nef, I don't know if I ever gave the movie that much credit, but when you say now that it's in your top three, I can agree with that. I have a deeper appreciation for that now. Yeah, the thing that really drew me or really made me like, wow, this is just such a good movie is they made a character in Peter Venkman who should be hated, but they <laughs> made him very charming. <laughs> Bill Murray is uh, my little brother. Uh, he was like. He for a while he was living in South Carolina and he was or North Carolina and he was making uh working with these guys and they were making a, a sweet tea vodka, um and it was like a I can't remember the golfer's name but it's like a golfer who's known for being drunk so it's like a it's like instead of an Arnold Palmer it's an Arnold Palmer with vodka in it, um or some kind of alcohol in it and so and they call, and they named it because it's a spiked drink they named it after this other golfer and I'm I'm blanking on the name right now but um. They met Bill Murray a ton of times, and I didn't realize that my brother idolizes Bill Murray. Uh, Bill Murray. He, um, he, my brother loves Ghostbusters and loves everything Bill Murray's in Groundhog's Day, like everything Scrooge. And uh, you're right. Like I think something about Peter. He was probably on the page written to be just like this stoic jerk, like a uh, no nonsense kind of guy that you just hate, and he comes in and says the one thing you don't want to hear at the wrong, the wrong time. And I think because Bill Murray is Bill Murray, like he's he's likable, but he's a likable kind of douchebag or you know kind of a likable dick. He he played that character great. Like he really brought that character to a level where you where he's a lot of people's favorite character in that movie. Is that is that your favorite Ghostbuster, uh, Venkman? Honestly, I don't know if I have a favorite. I really like all of them. They're all great. They all have their different perks and different personalities. Like, Winston's, like, I would consider the every every man. Yes. Kind of like, and then, like, Ray and Egon are kind of like the really funny, um, nerdy group people. Right. What I got from this movie is that it's good to be strange. Don't change yourself, pretty much. That's great. Because... Yeah, because each character is um yeah, because when you think about it, um Ray is you could be considered a man child. <laughs> yeah, but just showing that you don't need to change. Well, I like how they. My favorite thing after rewatching the movie as an adult now is like oh, watching it. I I love that they turned hunting ghosts into a blue collar job. <laughs> it's it's I think that's so crazy. I'm like wow, these guys are just like totally like nine to fivers and uh and just like you know pick up punch their card in come into work every day and catch ghosts i think that's freaking awesome like that it, it make it adds something to the movie that i just feel like you know i hope i hope the new one does it i saw the new one with paul rudd i saw the trailer and it, it looks like it's a it was a good teaser for sure and but i want to see a little bit more on it but i hope everyone in that movie is just regular people that get pulled into this crazy situation um, but I'm sure there's probably going to be at least. Yeah, one. I hope so too. Yeah, I'm sure there's going to be at least one or two smart. Pe- I, the kids seem pretty smart, so um, so that could be kind of fun dynamic to play around with. 
All right, so we talked about Ghostbusters. Now let's talk a little bit about Venom and, you know, Venom Let There Be Carnage. So first of all, and I'm sure I know this from the comments and I'm sure other people will remember and stuff, but just to refresh everyone, anyone who's new here that's listening to this, what were your thoughts of the first Venom movie? Did you have any critiques and what are you hoping um, is kind of a, you know, reset in the second one to be, you know, to make it stronger if the, if you have critiques? And what are kind of the things you are hoping the second one nails perfectly? Well, I did like like the villains. I thought they were a little bit weaker than they should have been. Yeah. And also I felt that in certain places it felt extremely, extremely rushed. Yeah, definitely. Because as soon as Venom, or as soon as you hear Venom's voice, it seems like the movie just ends because it goes so fast. <laughs> Yeah, that that uh, the second half of the second act and the third act go by really fast. You are correct. Yeah, that's, and I, I hope they make Carnage a lot more intimidating than Bryant. Yeah, I hope so too. I mean, they got not that Riz Ahmed's a, a bad actor by any means, but him playing like a. A rich conglomerate guy who's like you know he, I don't know he's kind of like a brainy dude so when he tried to flex in front of you know Tom Hardy and like you know I'm just like well if, if Riot didn't come out of him then that would have looked really bad on on screen whereas I think Woody Harrelson he's he can play intimidating I, and I, I know he doesn't look like a brawler by any means but he looks sadistic sometimes, and uh, and certainly you don't want to walk down an alley and see and look up and see him smiling at you on the other end of the alley. That's for sure. Yeah, I watched him in uh, the movie's Natural Born Killers. So good. He's scary in that movie. He's so good in that movie. I I, I remember that seeing that movie when I was younger and just being like, this guy is freaking awesome. Um, and yeah, scary, super scary. Um, are you excited for Andy Serkis coming on to direct? Uh, yeah, I was actually not one of the few people, but I like the, oh my God, what is the name of it? Mowgli. I like that a lot more than most. Okay. thought it was a really good movie. Much darker take than the Disney one, but still pretty good. Yeah, I haven't seen that yet, but I um, but I've seen like uh, his his two other movies that he did, um, and I you know what he brings performance wise to his roles that he plays, I can imagine, and I say this on the show all the time, is that he speaks the language of actors, and although there are directors out there that can also do that without having an acting background, um, they're few and far between. I feel. And I feel like Andy just, and it sounds like him and Tom made a really nice friendship on uh, on their version of A Christmas Carol. Um, so I'm I'm really pumped. I mean, like when I heard that Tom is the one who brought Andy in, and so he said, "This guy, you got to meet with him, Sony. Like he's got to be the director of Venom too." I'm sure Sony was like, "What? <laughs> like, like this this guy who's like like won awards and everything for all the stuff he's done, and, and you know and." Yeah, I, I would have been like, thank you, Tom Hardy. <laughs> Nothing against Ruben Fleischer, but I know he had like a, I think at first it was, uh, it was, there was a conflict with filming because of uh, Zombieland 2, but then, then it looked like he might have come back to do the second one, but then I think they, they went in and they were just like, no, let's get Andy Serkis, let's pin him down, and that kind of closed the gap, but you know, nothing against Ruben, I like him, he's an awesome dude, but I too am very excited about Andy. I think he's going to bring a lot to the the table, and I think performance wise, he's going to bring some really interesting stuff out of Tom and and Woody. I think. Yeah, it's definitely good when you hear about the director and the actors getting along really well, because that makes things a lot smoother, which yeah. makes things easier. Yeah, absolutely. It's I mean, you know, even when you get along, there's still going to be days where people kind of fight or you know because they're all trying to make the best product possible you know try to get the best scene or whatever so they're still going to have some of that i'm sure at times but you're right it does it does make it better when there's a, a deep mutual respect for each other and a, and a and they a mutual liking because then 
when you, when tensions do get high, you might sit there and go, you know what, dude, um, you know what, you're right. You know, like I, I'm sorry. I'm, you know, like you're. It's a friend, so you're more likely to kind of come to your senses before things get really nasty. <laughs> yeah. Um. Did you see all that new merchandise coming out from Venom? I want. I listened to the video. I didn't really s- see most of it because I was playing a game while I was listening to it. Nice. What game were you playing? I, um, I play a game called Smite. Oh, I, I've heard of that. I haven't played it. Are you? Do you play it often? Are like? Are you addicted to it? Like people are addicted to Fortnite. I, to some people, I'm probably addicted to it, but I don't play it as often as I used to. Okay. But yeah, they. It's a MOBA, so it can get pretty toxic. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> I just I just ignore them, though. I noticed that about you. I gotta say, when I see your comments, um, you you seem pretty level-headed. Like, I mean, there's a couple times where you're like, "Oh, I you know I disagree. I, I think this and stuff," but you're you're very you're very respectful. You're very nice. Uh, it, that's why, like, when you wrote me and you were like, "Hey, I, you know, at some point, I'd love to be on the Parasite podcast." I I didn't even think about it i'd spent zero seconds thinking about it i was like oh yeah definitely because i was like this guy is always very respectful of other people's opinions and of mine uh even if he is a a descending opinion um and i gotta say like youtube it's people think that's hard to like that it's uh easy to find that on youtube but it's not it's easy to find people to agree with you because sometimes people are just like, oh, I like what he says, and, and, and or I like him as a person, or I like her as a person. So you just agree with everything they say. And um, and But it's nice to see where people go like, hey, I disagree, but they say it in a nice way. It's, uh, you know, so I can imagine when people get toxic on a video game, you probably kind of roll your eyes and turn turn away from it. So I got to ask, because that's it's sometimes uncommon in college students. So, uh, you know, in your opinion, why do you think you kind of, you know, sh- shy away from that kind of stuff, or you don't like jump into the muck? Why why do you stay back and and keep a level head? Because I think it's great. I just don't see it very often. When I was in high school, I was actually I would get pissed off at people's opinions, but I'd never comment because mm-hmm. I, I rarely comment on most things. But I, then one day I'm like, why am I letting this? piss me off it's not my opinion unless somebody's telling me my opinion's wrong and i'm like stupid for having that opinion obviously i'm gonna get pissed at that but other than that i try to ignore people that are just like oh this movie's terrible and it's their opinion you know you're 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 a little wise beyond your years man because uh for me like what you just said i don't think i actually said anything like that out loud until I was like 36 years old, which was like three years ago. Um, so that's great to hear that coming from you. And uh, and I know there are other people who are around your age that, uh, you know, pop in the chat sometimes who th- are the same way. And it's it, it makes me feel so good about, um, you know, the more and more of you I see that are younger who are coming to that revelation. That's why I, I say it ad nauseum because I just don't – I know there are people that are younger than me that watch the Venom vlog – and I just, one, I want them to understand, like, all right, you're watching this show. I'm not here to just talk about Venom. I want to talk about movies, too, so you can kind of get a better understanding, the best I can, you know, deliver it, uh, of how movies are made. But then I also, I love that what you just said, like, tempering expectations, not getting upset when someone has a different opinion than you. It's like, to me, that's very key. And I, I'm still not great at it. Like, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I still have some work to do on it, but I got to say, uh, hearing it from you is great and i i do see it all the time in the comments like you're you're when i whenever i see a comment from you whether i'm at like because at work i can't really check my phone the type of job i have they don't let me so i get the notifications but the second i'm on lunch i'll scroll through and if i see a comment from you i usually just go right to it and heart it and thumbs up it right away and i'm like all right i try to remember to respond to this later seek uh, because sometimes i can be bad at that but i try to at least go right away and and heart it and, and thumbs up because uh it's always good to hear from you. That actually means a lot to me because I have like low self-esteem, I guess is what you would say. I don't seem like it because I can put it aside, but I was actually really nervous about even asking to be on the Parasite podcast. I don't know why, but... 
Yeah, I don't know why either, but I'm glad you did. Like when I got that email, I was like, I think it's a bummer because I, I have that email, but I don't have notifications set up for it. So, so and I f keep forgetting to set it. So, uh, so I had your email, and I think it was like a day or two later, I finally responded. But I was like, oh man, I'm so glad he asked to be on the show. And there's a couple other people like Bruce. I'm going to have him on the show coming up, and a couple other people reached out to me recently, and and then I also reached out to a few other people. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's great. I mean, I'm I'm so glad. And and uh, the self esteem thing. I mean, I get it. We we all have we all go through that, and we all have our our phases and 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 deal with that in our own ways. Um, but I'm glad you put that aside to come here, man. Because uh, it's, I mean, th the whole point of this show obviously is so I can meet you guys in a way and and talk to you and also have the other people who listen to the Venom vlog have a chance to get to know who you are too. So now when you comment, they go, oh, I know that guy. He was on, you know, episode 18 or whatever of the Parasite podcast. Um, is there people that you like interacting with in the chat ever or like in the comments or do you just like to kind of just do your own thing most of the time? I think what Eddie Smollett says most of the time is pretty funny. He's awesome. He he emailed me last night with like with like a comic book spoiler, and I go, Eddie, stop spoiling comic books for me. And he would laugh, and he's like, I'm so sorry, man. I, I get carried away. I forgot. Um, but he's uh he's great. I, I love Eddie's mullet. He's he's. I'm so glad I got to meet him. Like not in real life, but I mean like through the show. Like a lot of you guys, you included, and Lonely Symbiote and and Bruce, and there's so many people that we've had on the show recently, and uh, that I'll have coming up that. I feel very lucky. Like I, I, um, I am like you. I have low self-esteem in some regard. I, uh, I'm trying to battle that by doing this YouTube show. I'm trying to talk more and get better at listening to people and 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 you know and being clear with my thoughts. Of course, these are all things I still got to work on, but I feel like I've gotten better since I started the show, and it's helped me in my real life with you know retail jobs and customer service jobs. It helps me talk to people and be patient with them and be better with them. So um, it's this thing th that we do here is I never would have thought like I was like, man, well, I'll probably talk about Venom for like 20 episodes. No one's going to watch them and I'm going to give up on it. And I'm, I'm so happy I stuck with it and uh, and now get to do this show and meet you guys. Yeah, I pretty much said screw it in to do the show. Because yeah. I'm like, this has held me back too many times from different opportunities. I'm like, I'm not gonna allow it to happen again. I gotta let me ask you. I'm first of all, I'm glad that you you again wise beyond your years because uh, I don't think I made a, a decision like that till I was much older than you. Where I'm just like, screw it. I'm tired of holding myself back. I gotta try new things. Um, so that's great. I appreciate you coming out of uh, out of your shell to hang out with us tonight and uh, and to talk with me. Yeah, so I, I gotta, and I appreciate you saying that. It means a lot to me. But I, I have to comment this. I don't know if this will boost your confidence at all. Uh, this is something that I get sometimes, and it depends on who tells me. And I, I like fifty-fifty, like it and don't like it. So I don't, you know, hopefully you don't take offense. But has anyone told you you sound like Michael Cera? Uh, I can't say that anybody has. I have been told I look like Seth Rogen with long hair <laughs> when I have long hair. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, you you sound like Michael Cera, um, in my in my mind, and because um, I was just thinking about that when I first got on the phone with you, I was like, remember to say that later, because uh, I like Michael Cera. I was actually working at Sony when they were doing like um, a bunch of like his earlier movies, like uh, what was it, uh, Break uh, Super Bad and stuff. Um, they filmed that like the the little convenience store that they walked to is like right down the street from the Sony lot in Culver City. Um, so so I've heard him speak like a like a hundred times, and uh, so yeah I don't know something something about it. People you sometimes tell me I don't hear it at all when I go back and listen to my episodes. I'm like I don't know what people are talking about. They're crazy, but I've had some people tell me I sound like Charlie Day, and I'm like, nah, I don't hear it. <laughs> I don't hear it at all. I guess it's harder to notice when you're listening to your own voice than listening to other people's voices. I, I guess. I guess that's true, Michael. That's true. Um, <laughs> all right, I got you to laugh. That's good. Um, so we got a few more minutes left here before we before we wrap up. And uh, I, you know, I'm I'm just I'm curious too. Do you you know are you just a movie fan? Because I know I talk about comics and cartoons on here too with Venom. Um, or do you dip into any of that stuff as well? I dip into. Um... 
Oh my god, my now my train of thought went <laughs> away. Uh, I honestly forgot. That's okay. I'll, I'll repeat the question, see if it, it rattles it. Um, I was talking about how, um, you know, like I, I talk more than just about the Venom movie, but I talk about the cartoons and the comics. So I was just curious if you dip into any of the comics or if you play, or, you know, play any of the video games or watch cartoons. Do you do anything like that for Venom or are you just interested in the Tom Hardy movie? I wish I could dip more into the comics. I can't really afford it right now, but I got the, um, the first five Donny Keith issues. Okay. I remember really liking those and most of the other things I know about Venom is from like YouTube videos and stuff like that. Is there an an attribute of Eddie Brock or, or Venom, you know, um, that appeals to you? Like are you just hooked in because Tom Hardy's playing him? Because honestly, I love the character, but the only thing that made me interested in the movie at all was that they cast Tom Hardy. Um, and then Michelle Williams and the other actors and actresses that are in the movie, but it started with Tom. So do you have an interest in him as a character, or have has that developed as you've like maybe listened to, you know, other YouTube shows and stuff? I remember liking the character of Eddie slash Venom in the comics before, mm-hmm. but I'm pretty sure I like them more now after the Tom Hardy movie and stuff. Okay, and is there is there a a quality in Eddie that maybe? you connect with or you empathize with is there is there anything about the guy that you just kind of are like yeah this is why i like him that they aren't afraid to show that he's human and will make mistakes yeah you know there is just i read a lot of stuff from novels to comics young adult novels full novels uh um, poetry like i read a lot of stuff and and stuff that i come across with characters in them movies and everything like it's it's tough because I, I feel like a lot of times nowadays people are afraid to give their characters real flaws like obviously there's a line if you go too far your character becomes like a full-on villain or they become you know something that's unredeemable or irredeemable and stuff so i understand the line that you have to walk and i understand how like how thin that line is but i feel like a lot of writers are afraid to do that but yet i see eddie and i look at his 30 plus years of comics and I just see this guy who is constantly making mistakes, but yet constantly pulling in new fans uh, every time a new writer comes onto the book or every time a new iteration of him is on a cartoon or a movie. Like it, It's absolutely s- surreal to see a character like this and have this kind of impact. And to the point where I think it even surprised Sony when they made the solo movie and they were like, all right, we, this movie will probably make five or six hundred million dollars tops. And it made almost nine hundred million, almost a billion dollars. Like, so I just—that's what I love about the character too—is that he is flawed and he's consistently flawed. And I think that's important in stories. You can't do that with every character. Some of your characters, like your, you know, your Batman's and your Superman's and your Spider-Man's and stuff like that, like they have to kind of be a little bit better than us so we can, uh, you know, maybe hope to achieve that one day. Um, but characters like Venom and and Nightwing and or Roy Harper I think is a better example or Jason Todd I think these are great characters that can be broken multiple times over and over and people will still root for them and uh, it's so good to hear you say that because I think too too that that's his best quality. Um. Right. So any last words you want to say before we wrap up the episode? Uh, no, just thank you for having me on, and that's about it. Hey, no, no problem, man. Well, I appreciate, like, I know it's not easy um, to talk, like, consistently, like, for, you know, for what we've been here for, like, almost 40 minutes now, and uh, I, I get it, and so, but I'm glad you you took the risk, and you took the, you, you know, you, 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 like, took the chance, and you trusted me to, to have you here and to talk with you, and it meant a lot to me. It really did, and I, I hope... You continue to do well in school. I hope to continue to see your comments in my comment section. And, you know, now that you've done it once, it's like riding a bike. It'll get easier. So maybe, you know, after I go through a cycle of people uh, starting in 2021, as we're gearing up for the second movie, after trailers come out and stuff, I think I'm going to bring back a lot of the guests that I've had, including yourself, as we count down to the movie's release next summer. 
and I'll bring you guys back and we'll talk about trailers and that way everyone who listens to the show can start hearing your opinions on the the stuff that I cover if that's cool with you yeah that's cool <laughs> awesome man well good luck with school Christian and uh, and thank you so much again for being here and what's your Twitter account again so people know where to find you it's at Dino killer 45 there you go guys and I'll put a link to that down below uh, Christian your time was meant so much to me and I know you got a lot of other things you got to do with school and everything so I'll let you get back to it but thanks for making time to be with us today and also to introduce yourself to the parasites like this I, it, it's great and I hope you make more friends through this uh, this community that we're building no problem thanks for having me you got it and everyone out there thanks so much if you're interested in maybe being on the show yourself uh, let me know just uh, send me an email at the parasite podcast at gmail.com and I'll you know start talking to you and we'll work something out we'll figure out a day where I could probably bring you on you have to be 18 years or older to be on the show just a heads up for you guys out there and uh, and I appreciate you all listening so make a new friend Christian Cottle his uh, you know he'll be in the comment section sometimes you'll see his account down there and uh, follow him on Twitter make a new friend and uh, you know get to know this guy he's going to be a marine biologist he's going to do a lot of good stuff in the world as he uh, as he continues to grow and he's already wise beyond his years so i'm very much looking forward to uh not just you as a venom fan and seeing where we all go as venom uh, fans but to see where a lot of you guys go in the real world and the kind of change you're going to bring to it so christian good luck with everything and we'll talk to you again next year see you then all right see you guys like share subscribe all that fun stuff and we'll see you in the future peace <laughs>